foremost minister, Bible analyst and authority on the divine inspired word of God. The next voice speaking, Bishop S.C. Johnson. Greetings, everyone. This is the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. It's not a, another church like this one. And that's why uh, nobody else agree with it. You ought to know that. Uh, nobody agrees with me. Everybody, everybody. It's just contrary to what I preach or what I say. So then that's the proof that it's not another church like this. Because this is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. And of course nobody agrees with, with it. So then everybody's wrong. Everybody got to be wrong because what I have here is according to the word of God backed up with Bible. And everybody is contrary to what I say. Well, that's a proof that they are wrong because the Bible certainly is right. And everybody that don't agree with what the Word of God says got to be wrong. All right. Now, we have some letters here. Where are they? We have some letters here uh, that we want to clarify. Uh, as I said, everybody's after me, trying to condemn me, trying to catch words out of my mouth. That's the way they did when Jesus was here. But uh, he come out all right. And so will I. All right, what letter you got first? Yes. Uh, special announcement. Mr. Johnson has a special uh, tape recording that he would like for all those who have tape recorders to order and play. This message will be ordered from the tape committee at 22nd and Bainey Street, pulled up to 46 Pennsylvania. Now, I want to say we have a special message that was uh, given of God. That message was heard on last evening. That message is enough for all creation. If you don't hear nothing else but that until Jesus comes, that's enough. Now, I want you that have tape recordings that like to go to people's house and play the tape recording so they can hear the word of God, I want you to order one. I want all the churches to order one so he can have it to play. I'm going to send one to every one of my stations. And uh, if they play it a week, it's all right. It's all right. It's a thing. It was a message given direct by the Spirit. And, of course, it surprised me when I heard it. I didn't know I was like Mary. Mary said, uh, well, she couldn't understand how the thing was, but let it be. Amen. So I had no more to do with the message than Mary did with about Jesus being conceived. So write all churches, write and get this special message. It's good to play in your service, during your service, and in homes and everywhere. Because everybody must obey and live up to what that message say. All right. Now, the first letter comes from our from listener, Mr. Thomas Woodfield, and he writes, Dear Mr. Johnson, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In my letter <laughs> to you on last Sunday, you left off part of my question, which I hope that you will open up this Sunday, as I think this will give some light on the subject, on this subject. And this was the question. If Jesus Christ was not the Son of God that rose from the dead, who was God speaking to after his resurrection? 
In Acts chapter 13, verses 32 33. Please All right. tell me very this question, for we've been listening this Sunday. All right. Who was God talking to? That was God talking about himself. Amen. All right. Read. Acts chapter 13. Yes. Verse 32 and 33, is that correct? Acts chapter 30. 13, 33, 30 through 33. 30 through 33. Yes. But God raised him from the dead. Listen now, um, uh, Tom. But God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. In other words, uh, finish reading. But God raised him from the dead. Yes. He was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, yes. who are his witnesses unto the people. Yes. And we declare unto you, glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the Father, God has fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he has raised up Jesus again. Yes. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Yes. Now yesterday morning, <clears throat> I raised myself up out of the bed. And I was seen of, of many yesterday because nobody didn't help me up. I raised myself up. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus was God. And Jesus raised himself up. For Jesus said in John 2 19, I believe it is. The second chapter of John, verse 19. Yes. Destroy this temple. Listen at this, Whitfield. Destroy this temple. And in three days. And in three days. I will I, raise it up again. I will raise it up again. And the Bible said God raised it up. And the Bible said Jesus said he would raise it up. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Now you see that body was, wasn't the sun. It was just a body. And when that body was destroyed, then Jesus, the spirit, his spirit, raised up his body. And Jesus Christ was God and is God, unless you're going to call the Bible a lie. Because the Bible says that destroy this temple. And in three days. And in three days. I will raise it up. And your scripture that you brought said God raised it. Amen. Now I dare you to tell me to raise it. Amen. I dare you. Yes, sir. God raised it and Jesus raised it. Amen. And I dare you to tell me to raise it. Amen. Now Jesus Christ was God That's right. that raised up himself. Amen. Read on there in the second chapter of John. In the second chapter of John. But you have sense enough to know when, uh, when one is risen, risen up. Don't you know that when one uh, risen up or uh, risen, he, he does it by his own power. Amen. He don't do it by no assistance. Amen. Nobody need, nobody didn't help me up this morning. <laughs> I got up myself. Amen. Amen. So nobody helped Jesus up. He got up himself, That's right. and he was God, and got up himself, so God raised up himself. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, read. Destroy this temple. Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. And in three days, I, I will raise it up. Then that was his spirit talking about what he was going to do to his body. That's, it. That's what I dare to contradict. I dare in the Bible scholar of the Son to contradict me. I dare you, don't you grunt against what I said? I said, was Jesus' spirit raising up Jesus' body? That's what it was. Raising up his body. He was God. And he raised up his own body. That body was no more the son. It was just a natural body. Sonship had gone. And when that body became a natural body, which he called his temple, then his spirit raised up his body. Amen. Amen. Don't contradict me. 
All right, read on. Then said the Jews. Then said the Jews. Forty and six years was this temple in building. Yes. And will thou rear it up in three days? Yes. But he spake of the temple of his body. He was talking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead. When he was risen, risen. Now you know nobody didn't help him up. When you're risen, when he's risen from the dead, he got up by his own power. You understand? When a fellow is helpless, then somebody had to take him up. That right? Amen. But when you're not happy and got power enough, you get up yourself when you want to get up. Amen. Amen. When therefore he was risen from the dead, yes. the disciples remembered that he had said unto them, said this unto them. Yes. And they believed the scripture. And they believed the scripture. Now you bear in mind, your scripture that you give me is that God raised mm -hmm. from the dead. Right. And then here's another scripture that Jesus said, uh, destroy this temple. And I will raise it up. And I'll raise it up. And then another scripture says that when he had risen, when he had risen, you know what that means, when he got up. He got up by his own power. Didn't have no assistance, whatever. Because he was God himself. And God raised himself up, raised up his own body. God did. That was God's body. Was no son of God. Thomas then said, Give me Thomas. Yes, sir. Twenty chapter. Give me. And Thomas answered and said unto him, Why don't you come down here and let me jam? I say out there and write, Come on down here. I'd like to get you for the people. And I want to jam. You know better. You know better. You know better. All right. And Thomas answered and said unto him, And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord. You see, you believe a lie, Tom Whitfield. You believe a lie. Anybody that believes Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I believe a lie. I'm going to be damned forever, Tom Whitfield, and all that I like you. You may take this for fun, but I tell you one thing. When you fall in an eternal hell for believing a lie, you're going to curse the day that you were begotten. You understand? You're going to curse. You don't have no Bible. You and nobody else. Amen. That uh, little would-be hypocrite that I asked one question at the Orchard Auditorium. He, he, I killed him the first question. And he hadn't been able to answer. He lied right and left, up and down. But he hadn't been able to answer that question. And that was, he said, that uh, like you said and many other false prophets and hypocrites that there is a son of God now, in heaven now. That's a lie. That's a lie. And when I asked him, what did the son of God consist of? And his mouth flew open, his eyes got the flaring and flashing, and he couldn't talk. And he couldn't talk and still can't talk. That's right. He can't tell me that it's the son of God in heaven now. And no son of God in heaven never was. Never was. The sonship started in Mary's womb. And he ended up on the cross. He ended up right there on the cross. And from that time until now, God didn't have no son. He ain't got no son. Amen. That was God's body. The son got out of the body. And God got out of the body. And left that unnatural body. And then God got in that body and raised up his body. That's right. That's reading the Bible says God raised him from the dead. That's right. God raised him from the dead. That's right. And who is God? Jesus. That's right. Let's see it. And Thomas answered and said unto him, I God don't nobody know. You know it's a sad thing. It's nothing for me to rejoice about. It's the only thing that I rejoice about that God had mercy upon me and gave it to me. Amen. Reveal it to me. I have the Bible. Amen. All right. And Thomas answered and said unto him. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my Lord, and my God. Well, tell us, is, did Thomas tell the truth? Amen. Is Jesus Lord and God? Thomas then said, the Son of God. But he said, my Lord, and 
my God. And my God. That's what the Bible said. He was no son of God. He was God. Because he, God, raised up his own body. That's right. All right. Next letter. Coming off here, Pennsylvania. Dear Bishop, I wrote you a letter two weeks ago. The question I asked was, has the great and dreadful day of the Lord come yet? I'm not trying to be smart. I think the people don't know it and think that Elijah was sent up to heaven whole body and soul. I'd like to know from you. I have a lot of confidence in you and think you are sincere and honest. Please tell me over your broadcast and thank you very much. May Almighty God be with you. No, Elijah wasn't sent up to heaven body and soul. Amen. Not to the third. Uh, nobody's gone to the third heaven but Jesus. Amen. No, the great and terrible day of the Lord didn't get there yet. But it's on its way. That's the reason I'm warning everybody. I'm interested in the soul of men. And in the soul of women. I'm really interested. I'm praying both night and day. That the eyes of the people will be enlightened before they die and go to an eternal everlasting hell. I'm glad for it. I'm glad for the broadcast that we have in New York City. Amen. We're going to have every night from Monday night through Saturday night. Then we're going to pound on New York Sunday. That'll be seven days a week, 365 a year. That will bring it in on New York City. We're going to drop it there so that New York City won't have no excuse. Thank God for the broadcast. All right. Next letter. A letter from New Elizabeth, New Jersey, right? Dear Mr. Johnson, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like you to explain 1 John chapter 2, verse 14 through 20. 1 John chapter 2, yes. verse 14 through 20. Uh -huh. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised. I beg your what pardon. do you got? I beg your pardon. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the nah, not too fast. Read it again. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Yes. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. Now it takes strength and it takes knowledge Amen. in order to convey to the church what the church needs and what the church has got to have. Young men represent strength and father knowledge. Amen. It says you have known him from the beginning. Amen. Known him. Now then, uh, until you really know how to do a thing, you're not able to do it. Amen. Until you have strength to do it, even though you have knowledge, it still will be like it. So it takes knowledge and it takes strength in order to perform this that God Almighty has ordained for the human family. Amen. All right. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. Yes. And the word of God abideth in you. Yes. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Yes. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Don't love the world. Don't love the world. Amen. Amen. Don't love the things that are in the world. That is, things that are the world love and the world go after. The church can't do that. Amen. Yeah, man. Amen. You would be then you hypocrite that is trying to duck this gospel I'm preaching. You're going to duck right in hell. Right. You got a false prophet, let you straighten your hand, let you wear your nylon stock. That's of the world. Half straightening is of the world, not of the spirit. 
The Bible translated that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So hair straightening, everybody that got that spirit to straighten their hair and straightens their hair is of the word and going to be lost. Everybody, you can jump around and talk in all the tongues and jerk out, jerk uh, a pair of mules. Amen. Amen. But you're going to hell jerky. Uh, you understand? The Holy Ghost said, love, love not, not the, the world. world. Neither the things that are in the world. You can't, people that are after God can't love the world and can't love the things of the world. They just can't do that. They've got to die to the things of the world. Nylons and hair straightening and lip painting and jewelry hanging on and fingernail painting and toenail painting. You are of the devil. You are of the world. Now listen what the Bible says about it. All right. If any man love the world. If any man don't make any difference what, who he is. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. The love of God is not in that man. For all that is in the world. Yes, what's in the world. The and when you love the world, then the love of God is not in you. Yes, what's in the world. For all that is in the world, all that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, the world is going after the lust of the flesh. That's what the world's going after. You look into the beer garden. Look into the saloon, the beer garden, dance hall, open air movie. Look at the racetrack. My God, those folks are of the world. And they are serving it well, too. Ah, yes, uh, but they're going to serve in hell. Yes, and they're going to serve that, too. Yes, all right. For all that is in the world. All that are in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. That's television. Television, it pulls the world in. Pulls into the people, those carnal minded, worldly minded people. The television pulls the world in the home. They so sit right in the home and see what the world's doing. Amen. Pull the whole world in. And any time you've got one and you've got that man serving you, serving the lust of your eyes, you, you can be a preacher. You don't have to believe this. I know you don't. But you'll understand. The Holy Ghost is speaking against you. Saying the lust of the eye. For all that is in the world. Amen. That was the greatest uh, thing that ever has been. To bring the world in your home. Greatest thing. Just had turned the television on. Well, I got a world uh, desire to see something. I want to see something worthy. See what's going on in the world. Want to see what the world is doing. Want to see who's dancing. Want to see who's boxing. Want to see who's fighting. Want to see everything that the world is doing. Amen. They're pulling the world in. And any time you've got it in your home, you're hell bound. Yes, you are. You can look at it and get up and go to church and Pulling false prophets. They're going to have a religious uh, show. All right. But you're going to hell just the same. Because I'm not on it. Hey Amen. If I was on it and was nothing but me, it wouldn't be wrong. It would be all right. Hey Amen. Nothing but me. The old, the old radio is the same thing. You take the radio and play all them jazz all day. And hear all that stuff that's bad at the television. Understand? Amen. Uh, when I get off today, then cut it off. Don't turn it on no more until the night. You folks that is in this vicinity. Amen. Turn on WDAS again tonight. Seven o'clock. One woman got so mad with the message last night to call up and curse. 
But bless God, the message had gone forth. And I told her that we're going to give it right back to you. Oh, dear God, you'll have to curse again. Amen. You'll have to keep cursing. Because we're going to set down on the word of God. Yes. Going to set down on the word of God. You're going to hear it in your bed. Atmosphere is charged with it. Somebody going to tell you about it. Even though you cut it off, somebody going to say, Did you hear Bishop Johnson? Either whether they'll be in favor of me or against me, but they're going to tell me. They may be cussing too, but they'll tell you what I say. That's right. Oh, God, you're not going to get away from it. Bible says they shall not escape. That's right. Love not the world. A lot of preachers got television. So called saints got television. Amen. But you're on your way to hell. All right, what it says now. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. If you saw me smoking a cigar, that day you would put it all over the country. That Bishop Johnson backslid. Somebody say, how? I saw him smoking a cigar. Somebody say, you, you, you don't mean it. That I, I, yes, I did. Amen. Why, backslid. Why, went after the lust of the flesh. Foul, smoke the cigar. Well, what have you done when you take a television? Go after the lust of the eye. You've done the same thing. That's right. All right. For all that is in the world. Yes. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes, then you backslid. Yeah. Huh? Right. If I smoke the cigar and backslid, then you watch the television and backslid. Yeah. That's for sinners. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hellbound folk. Yeah. Praise God, if you were in the spirit, you wouldn't be after the television. No, sir. No, sir, you'd be after the spirit. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And the world is not after the spirit. So you know television is of the world. And you got one? You're going to hell, you hypocrite. You're going to hell with your television. Look at it and, amen, bring the children up watching it. Increase the lust of their eyes. But you and them two are going to hell. Preacher, you're going. You're going to hell, preacher. Amen. Listen what the word says. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eye. And the lust of the eye. And the pride of life. Ah, when you put your nylons on, your toes out your heel, out and straighten your hand, Marcel Way, and all that stuff, that's the pride of life. That's the pride of life. And where are they going, Bishop Johnson? Hell. It's not of the Father. It's not of the Father. But it's of It's not of God. It's not of God. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of God. But it's of the world. You hear? But it's of the world. And the world passes away. And the world is going to the lake. The world is going to the lake. The world passes away. And the lust thereof. And the lust is going to end too. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's the reason I tell you to get away from the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, and do the will of God. And if you do the will of God, you'll walk in the Spirit. Amen. Then when you walk in the Spirit, you've gotten away from the world. Amen. All right. Read Next on. letter from Norfolk, Virginia. Read as follows. Dear Bishop Johnson, if you didn't, uh, you didn't finish that, oh. did he finish? No. Keep and the reading. world passeth away. Yes. And the lust thereof. Yes. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Yes. Little children, it is the last time. Yes. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Now here they are. An Antichrist is one that is against the word. In any sense, if it's only one thing in the Bible. 
he or she is against that. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh -huh. And as you have heard, that Antichrist will come. Yes. Even now, are there many Antichrists? There's plenty. Whereby the world is full of Antichrist. Against God. Against the word, priest. Like this woman called up last night after she heard the word of God and God himself preached that message. Amen. And don't you know that devil cursed? Just cursed. Amen. Called up one of my secretary and cursed. Want me to get the so-and-so off <laughs> the radio. She didn't have to tune in. She'd no, been listening. Why didn't she cut the thing well, off? But God would have her hear it. That's right. And that's enough. She don't have to hear it no more. She heard that last night. That's enough. That's right. yeah. Thank God it'll last through all eternity. That's right. That's right. All right, son, read on. Little children, now that it is the last time. Yes. And as you've heard that many, that Antichrist shall come. Yes. Even now are there many Antichrists. Uh -huh. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Yes. They went out from us. What? They went out from us. Glory to God, they went out from us. But they were not of us. Wasn't of us, against Christ. That's when they went out. Yeah. Against Christ. And the time you go out, you're against Christ. Yeah. And the time you're not against them, you're staying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. For if they had been of us, if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Yes, when you find people in this thing and go out, they are antichrist. They are against Christ. They are not of Christ. And not being of Christ, they are not of us. All right. But they went out. But they went out. That they might Don't care who he is, who she is, that goes out of this thing, he's gone on his way to hell. Why? He went out. Somebody said, what about them you put out? He did something. Hadn't it done nothing, we wouldn't have put him out. And he, he's got to go to hell too, or else repent and get right. All right. But they went out that they might be made manifest. Everyone went out. You can know like this. This is the Holy Ghost talking here, that it wasn't right. That what he want, but it wasn't right. And everyone that went out, if you follow him, he's going, you're going to hell with him. All right. I'm laboring for your soul's sake. I'm laboring for your soul's sake, not for nothing else, because you know, otherwise I could stop now. Yeah. Yes, I could. I could stop now and sit down forever. Yeah. I wouldn't have to worry. I got a 20, uh, upwards of a 23,000. When I'm through with all of my uh, line charge and everything, I'll have to put up $23,000, amen, for the month of November yeah. in order to get it to you. And we're taking stations on all the time. I'm after some more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to cease. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to get this thing to the world. Right. Yeah. Amen. I'm buying tape recording. I'm the preacher. Yeah. And I just let the tape recording display a uh, remind yeah. or bring to you what I say. Yeah. Uh -huh. And everybody that hear me and obey me is on the safe side. That's right. yeah. And them that don't hear me is lost. Yeah. Now I go to church today, church goers. I know you are. Yeah. You're going because you are a hypocrite. Yeah. Anytime you hear the word of God come out of my mouth and then go to some church, whatever church it is or whatever it call itself, go to some church, you are a first-class hypocrite. Yeah. You don't mean it. You're just a liar. You're a faker. Yeah. You don't mean it. You don't want to live right. Who in the world would re that want to live right would speak evil of one thing I've grunted? Right. You can't do it and get Bibles to justify it. That's impossible. I have spoken the truth about everything. Huh? Ready to live up to what I preach. I defy creation, the final flaw in my gospel. And they know it's the truth. My God, if they could find a flaw, this place would be crowded out today. Yes, but they know better. They stay off. Amen. All right. 
But they went out that they might be made they manifest. They went out that they might be made manifest. That they were not all of them. That they were not all of them. But you have an unction from the Holy One. Yes. And you know all things. So everybody that goes out is not of us, and we have an unction from the Holy One. Praise God, and that makes us know everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next letter. Hey, listen from north of Virginia, right? Here, this is John. A few days ago, some of the Holy Witnesses were by my house with a damnable doctor. I'd like you to expose that damnable doctrine on your broadcast, should you have time. Now, they say, according to Matthew chapter 27, verse 55, and Joel you know, chapter 2, verse 28, God called women to preach. That's a lie. <laughs> Read it quick. Matthew what? Uh, chapter 27, verse 55. Verse 55. Yes. And many women that were beholding a fall which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. Ministering, they didn't preach to Jesus. <laughs> You're so simple and dumb and ignorant. Amen. Amen. Jesus come down here for some, God come down here for somebody to preach to God. <laughs> Amen. That Amen. meant they served him. That's right. Yes, sir. They served. Amen. When you give service in any way, you're ministering. Yes, they are so ignorant. Tell them ignorant things to meet Bishop John. That's right. Amen. All right, read George. Chapter 2, verse 28. Yeah, be quick about it. My time's gone. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Yes. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh -huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes. And your young men shall see visions. Yes. And your old men shall dream dreams. Yes. And all my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Yes, well, now, there's a twofold prophecy. Hear me. There's one full prophecy that both men and women have. Amen. And what is that? Foretelling of coming events. A man can prophesy and foretell of a coming event, and a woman can prophesy and foretell of a coming event. Neither one of them are preachers. Neither one never will be preached. Yes, but then there's another prophecy done by divine inspiration interpreting Amen. and opening up Amen. and making it plain Amen. like I'm doing. Amen. See, I'm a preacher Amen. because I make all men see. Huh? I open it up and I got my opponents afraid of me. Amen. That's reason they won't run in on me. Yes. They'll get out there and holler and write, but they won't run in here. Oh, to God, because they know I'll open it up and make it so plain, I'll put them in a jam. Yes, Amen. I'll put them in a jam. I'd like to ask Tom Whitfield how many raised that body. Amen. How many raised that body? Jesus raised it and God raised it. And how many raised it? And let him give me Bible chapter and verse. And he knows better than other things I'd like to ask. Amen. Amen. Make him open it up. And I'd like to ask them, but I won't stay. They, they know better. Stay out there and holler, but they won't run in here. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm a Bible interpreter. Amen. 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 Back reading it. Everybody said, one man wrote me from Washington and said, all civilized folks, Johnson, uh, agrees that Jesus is and was the Son of God. Now, uh, I want to say to you all uncivilized folks, amen, amen. When you get uh, civilized by the Spirit and the thought of the Spirit, you won't believe that lie. You see, I'm the only one, I'm the only one, the whole world is keeping quiet about that. I'm the only one that's hollering that out, that is no son of God in heaven now. I never was none there. I'm the only one. Amen. And, but they, they can't do nothing about it because the reason I can talk it, I'm a Bible interpreter. That's it. See? Now, I'm the preacher. Uh, I'm the one that's ministering. That this ministry is not given to a woman. That's right. She's not given to her to interpret the Bible and open it up. Amen. But it's given to me. Right. She can say it's going to be an earthquake in 65. Oh, sure. Amen. That's for telling. A man can come along, he's not a preacher, and say there's going to be a famine in 63. Neither one of them are preachers. But I'm a Bible interpreter. Amen. And I'm prophesying also. Amen. But mine is different Amen. from theirs. That's right. 
So when Joel talked here about their sons and daughters going to prophesy, he was speaking about a twofold prophecy. One prophecy given to the woman and the man, neither one a preacher, and the other is given to the preacher that is under the uh, divine inspiration of the Spirit interpreting the Bible. You no, know, the Bible says, if there be an interpreter. That's huh? That's right. So I'm a Bible interpreter. Open it up, and I dare anybody to contradict what I've told you. All right. Read. Now they say in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 12, entitled them to be called Jehovah Witnesses. Read. Isaiah 43, 12. Yeah, read. I have declared and have saved and have shown when there was no strange God among you. Uh -huh. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yeah, they don't believe that. They don't believe the Lord is God. No. Amen. They say there are two gods. Amen. And now listen at that. <laughs> Jehovah Witness. God the Father who raised the Jehovah Witness. Witness. And, God the and Father. says two gods. That's the devil's witnesses. That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. Listen to what Jehovah is saying here. In the 10th verse of the same chapter. Yes. Isaiah 43. Yes. Chapter 43, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, yes. and my servants whom I have chosen. Yes. That ye may know and believe me. Yes. And understand uh -huh. that I am he. That I am he. Before me. Before me. There was no God formed. Did you hear that? There was no God formed. Isn't that before us? No. Well, you said Jehovah Witness says too. Then God couldn't have said before me. You can't talk about yourself and another and say me. You can't do that. You got to say us. That's right. You dumb thing. Turn them over in my hand. And I'll grind them to powder with that damnable darkness. Listen at that. What it say? Before me, there was no God born. Not before us. Before me. Neither shall there be a witness of Jehovah, who is Jesus Christ. You got to believe and witness that is one God. That's right. Ye are my witnesses. That's right. Saith the Lord. And my servant whom I have chosen. And my servant whom I have chosen. That you may know and believe me. You don't, they don't, the Jehovah Witness don't know. No, that, that you may know and believe me. And understand. And understand. They don't I understand. understand. That I am he before me. Then he said, he couldn't say that if it was true. I am he. And two, couldn't say that. All right. Before me. Before me. There was no God form. There was no God, not God. God form. Neither shall there be. And neither shall there be. After me. After me. I. I. Even I. Even I. Am the Lord. Am the Lord. And beside me. And beside me. There is no Savior. The Lord is Jehovah. Did you know that? The Bible says the Lord is Jehovah. The Lord Jehovah. Lord is the title, Jehovah's title. God told us that by my name Jehovah was I not known. That was his title. Notice what God is saying in Deuteronomy 32, 39. See now. There are no witnesses of God. They are the devil's witnesses. Some of Jehovah witnesses come around saying it's true. Huh? They don't say they don't say nothing about Jehovah's. Huh? Jehovah's no. witnesses, they got it wrong. If they're Jehovah, they believe it's true God, they got to say Jehovah's witnesses. That's right. Huh? To Jehovah. That's right. Huh? All right. Read 39. See now, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Yes. See now. See now. That I. That I. Even I. Am even he. I am he. And there is no God with me. Well, they said it's two. They said it's two God. God, Jehovah said, there is no God with me. That's right. Didn't it? That's right. Then it's a lie. And God didn't tell it. Who told it? 
the Jehovah Witnesses told him. Amen. So then, God never called a son or woman to preach the gospel and never will. God never declared that it was another God with him. He said there was no God with him. And I'd like to ask Jehovah Witnesses, where is that other? Where is the other one at? And God said in Isaiah 44, Isaiah 8, 4, 8. He said, ask the question, read. Isaiah 44, yes. 8. Yes. Fear ye not, uh -huh. neither be afraid. Uh -huh. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Yes. Ye are even my witnesses. Yes. Is there a God beside me? Read. Yea, there is Isaiah 44, yes. verse 8. Yes. Fear ye not, uh -huh. neither be afraid. Uh -huh. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Yes. Ye are even my witnesses. Yes. Is there a God beside me? Read. Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Now, if it's two gods, and if Jehovah knows two, they got God be. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> God said no more than God knows. Because God said he didn't know none beside himself. Right. And I'd like to question them. All right, send them this way. Now they say there are two gods, God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead, and God the Son whose name is Jesus, and he now sits on the right hand of his Father. In <laughs> Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. And no Bible for that. And no Bible for that. Jesus is God. Now, whose right hand is he sitting on? Open that up. I'd make him open that up. He's God. That's right. Amen. When the Bible says, sitting on the right hand of God, he's God. That's right. Then what does that mean? Huh? The right hand here means power, mm -hmm. majesty, authority. That's right. Amen. That's what it means. He's in the power and authority. That's it. That's really when it got up, it said all power. That's right. Amen. Given unto me. Somebody asked me who gave it to him. Took it himself. Yes. Revelation 11, 17. Amen. Huh? That's right. All right, let's see some. Revelation 11, chapter 11. Yeah. Verse right. 17. Yeah. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty. Which art. Which art. And was. And was. And art to come. And art to come. Because thou hast taken to thee uh -huh. thy great power and hast reigned. I want to say here about El Mishaw before closing. Don't think I'll let you get away. I'm still after you, Ellen Michelle, for your lies. And I dare you to ever show up to stand behind the lies you preach. You preach that whoever said Jesus Christ was God Almighty is a liar. That made Isaiah a lie, made Thomas a lie, made Jesus a lie. And you said, if I prove you to be a liar, you're going to be baptized in the name of Jesus only. You fail to live up to it. You preached a lie when you said God told Elijah that he had 7,000 prophets beside Elijah. Amen. That was another one of your lies. And I dare you to meet me. I'm going to call for you to meet me again. Yes. I want you to meet me again. Let's meet and have a battle. Yes. Let's have a week in Washington. Yes. I'll either come to your place or you come to mine. Yes. That isn't big enough, we'll rent the arena. Yes. I'll pay for it. Yes. Come and meet me. Yes. Are you right? Can you stand behind your damnable doctrine before your people? I say you're a liar and you're a false prophet. And you're afraid to death of me. That's right. Amen. That's right. Jump the subject and send it both. Tell them to write in. You'll answer the question. You tell them any kind of lie. You face me. That's right. Amen. Let us have it over again. Face to face. Crush them there about the Son of God and everything else. Let me question you. I want your people to know that they've got a liar. And when they're set under you, they're sitting under a liar and a false prophet Amen. that is not able to live up to that dam to his damnable teaching. I stop the mouth of him and all of you. 
at the Griffith Stadium. And the public knew I speak the truth. So I'm ready, Ellen Michaud. I'm going to call for you. Let's meet again. Yeah. Can't you say I'm wrong? And you're right. Question me publicly, eh? and let me question you. Yeah. If you know what you're talking, you will meet me gladly. Yeah. If you don't know, you won't meet me. Yeah. And I dare you to meet me, and I dare you not to meet me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm here today at 11 o'clock, everybody. Come in here, me. Obey what I say, because without the gospel I'm preaching, you're lost. to listen. Amen. The one plan of salvation and the only plan. See, I told my folks this when we had possibly two or three members. Spirit had made it known to me that it was nothing else. And I held that. Amen. Spirit told me and I held it. Yes, nothing else. Only one thing Amen. for everybody. One thing for every human. And it's opening the eyes, I've got more folks now agreeing with what I said. Yeah. They looked at me when I said it in those days yeah. and wondered who did I think I was. Yeah. And they laughed it to scorn. Amen. 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 They laughed it to scorn. Didn't believe it. Amen. Just like when God sent Moses to Israel. Israel said to Moses, who made you a ruler Amen. over us? They didn't know Amen. that God had. Amen. 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 
who made you a ruler. That's what they thought and are still saying about us. Amen. Who is he? Does he think he is? But you'll understand. I'm sure it'll be too late because they, well, they won't agree with me until they all get in hell. And that'll be too late for me to do any good. I'm warning now. I'm telling everybody now. This is the time to tell it on this side. And I want to tell it good. Amen. You know, uh, I'm very explicit. I like to get over to my hearers what I'm talking about and make them know what I mean. You know, some people, when they tell you something, they tell you so shallow and so light, and it looks like I wonder sometimes, what in the world matter with you? Why don't you make yourself plain? Why don't you make the folks understand? Sometimes there's something very important, and they're just that, well, it's not in them. And it gives me the all overs when I hear. Why don't you make them understand? Sometimes people are going out, closing the door, and somebody uh, bring me such and such a thing, and they close the door and have me murder. Amen. And they come back. Did you bring that? No, I can hear you. I told you, yes, you told them, but how did you tell them? Yeah. Huh? You told them, but how? Yeah. Amen. Amen. My mother used to tell me things, but she want me to buy and then go over it. Tell me to go, what did I tell you? Yeah. You know, she wanted me to get an understanding. What did I tell you? Told me to get a pack of cornmeal and so much meat and pound of cheese. I like cheese, you know. And I didn't tell you no such a thing. Then when I went over it and brought out what she told me and then she knew that I understood, then I would have to be responsible. But if she said, you go get a peck of cornmeal and get this and get that and the other, and go ahead on, and didn't bring me over it and make me tell it. When I come back, then it would have been her fault. But she fixed it so if you don't do what I said to, I'm going to get your back. So I'm going over it with you now. What I said, such and such a thing, I tried, and what else? That and such a thing, that's right, what else? That and such a thing, you go get it now, then I was responsible. You understand? I'm going to fix it so you'll be responsible. I'm not going to fix it so that that way. Bishop didn't make himself plain. Never made himself plain. He always said it so that you couldn't hardly get to understand what he was talking. Amen. You won't be like that when I'm through with you. Amen. Bless your heart. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. Amen. When I get through with you, brother, you're going to have the whole responsibility. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Huh? I'm going to deliver my soul. Amen. Yes, sir. Leave it all to you. Amen. 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 You see?
say if I don't warn you, then I'll be responsible. But in order to deliver my soul, I've got to do a good job on it. So I'll turn on everything when I'm through with you. The blood is on your own head. See the sword coming and warn the people. Then the blood is on their head. But if you see it coming and don't warn, Amen. then the blood will be on my head. That's the reason I take time. All the questions asked. I know they're just the opposite. I know they're contrary. But I take time and answer the question. Because in answering them, I'll help somebody else. If I can't help them, I'm going to leave the responsibility to them. They'll be responsible. That's what Paul meant when he said, if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Didn't he? Amen. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Amen. But if against my will, the dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Amen. What did he mean? I'm responsible. For the gospel. Yes, sir. In the day that I'm living, Amen. this is my responsibility. Yes, sir. That's reason I, I got to keep it up. Soul of men are dying. Soul of men are dying. And the master is calling for me. Amen. Calling for me. The master. Is calling for me. Yes, sir. Hmm. Amen. Hey. Amen. Then who will rise up for me Amen. against the workers of iniquity? Amen. Amen. Calling, I'm responsible. Long as I live. Amen. Reading the Spirit of the to me when I built the church uptown. All the saints and all is ready to sit down there under Jesus. Amen. Even before I see it, you could see the trust. It was all open. It wasn't plastic. It wasn't cement it downstairs. We were glad to get in the shell. Amen. I walked to the pulpit that Sunday morning. Spirit said to me, rise up. Amen. Go over this Jordan. Amen. Bow. And all this peace. Yes, Thank, 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit said it to me. Rise up. Amen. Go over this Jordan. 
thou and all the people Amen. had was not drop in the bucket to God. If I had did it myself, that was built by faith like this one. Amen. If I had did it myself, I'd have sat down. Amen. But God did it. God told me to rise up. Yes, sir. You ain't going to stop here. No, sir. You're not going to rest here. Rise up. Oh, Go over this Jordan. Amen. Tell your brother, he had you in mind. Amen. If I'd have sat down there, I wouldn't have got you. No, sir. You. Amen. 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 Huh? Amen. But I obeyed. Yes, sir. Something had a hold to me. And I rose up like God said. Amen. Amen. And today, look at it. Brethren are still getting rest. Still getting rest. They got to get it. Amen. Who's going to give them rest? Glory to God. I've got to give them rest. Amen. They've got to get rest through the word preached by me. That's the reason it's no stop to it. And no stop to this. You know how to stop. God, most men, they just get to one church and just sit there. Amen. I can't stop. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Just can't stop. Can't. Amen. If it was of me, I'd have been stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and give the folks up. But I can't do it. Amen. The reason I can't do it, the thing is not of me. It's of God. Amen. Being of God, the Bible talks about the increase. Yes, sir. You know, the Spirit has told me some good things through the years. Yes, sir. Some good things. The Spirit told me. Amen. Oh, the increase of his government. Peace, there shall be no end. Amen. This thing is just continuing. Continuing. Amen. Somebody break out over here. Baptize nothing over here. Somebody head over here gets mad at the end. Amen. Amen. Somebody over here is glad about it. Yes, Somebody over there is mad about it. But it's continuing. Amen. Why? So God. We can thank God today. Amen. The thing is not of us. Had it been of us, it would stop in a small place. Amen. Amen. But not being of us, look what the Spirit has done. Ten years' time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ten years. Amen. I'm even said in one place, forty some years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I haven't done that. Amen. Amen. Ten years' time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In ten years. Amen. I got the thing has gone almost over creation. know it's of God. Of the increase of his government, peace won't be no end. So I'm glad for what God has wrought. And I look at this miracle here. Eleven months 
20 days. I got out of the rubbish. Not a dime mortgage. Whoever didn't have done something like this, no human. Amen. Amen. As a group of white people in Atlanta, Georgia, built in church, and Brother Walton was telling me they have a, either a half a million or a million dollar mortgage. And they're wealthy folks. Amen. You know, that's a mortgage. Yes, sir. Here we are. God gave us our church Amen. without a dime mortgage. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You're living right in the days of miracles. Yes, the devil will close your eyes. Won't let you see it. When you tell people about it, they can't, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. They can't believe it. Millionaires don't do it. They mortgage their churches. They have a mortgage. Amen. Everything that was called for to be done here, we did it. Amen. Amen. Didn't have the money when it was said, but we said, all right. And God sent the money. Everything was done. Everything. It's, re it's remarkable. Amen. As a preacher, Bishop Hancock in Detroit, he started building around two years ago. And he's still in the basement. Still in the basement. He wanted to get a big church, and he's still in the base. Haven't come out of the base. Haven't finished in the base. Nothing lacked. I was there months ago and was in the hole, and uh, Brother Franklin was telling me the other day, still in the hole, uh, just like it was when you were here. And of God blessing us in 11 months with all oppositions against us. Yes, sir. And here it is, here. Yes, sir. It's something that you thank him for. Yes, and this isn't all it's done. Yes, Still doing. Yes, Look how far it's reaching. Look at the millions are hearing it. Thank God until creation now is sewed up. It's no use nobody trying to practice church no more. This is a dead end. Amen. Oh, it's a dead end. Can't nobody talk. Can't nobody answer. They don't want me to question them and they're afraid to question me unless they're out there where I can't get a hold of them. That shows they don't have no confidence in what they believe. I believe what I believe. I question you, brother. I'm wrong. I question you. Huh? Your belief, you know, makes you talk. But when you won't talk on what you say, believe you don't believe it yourself. All right. Well, we got something to thank God for. Amen. And again and again and again. Yes, sir. You know, Israel, 
I don't want you to do like Israel did. She lightly esteemed his wonders and his miracles. Lightly esteemed it and limited the Holy One of Israel. Don't you do that. God wants us to talk of his goodness and of his wonders and praise him for his mighty act. That's what the Bible said. And this was a mighty act. God pulled the thing down, burned it down, and got all them walls that was an offense to me out of my way. Now I can look without in being uh, anything being obscure. And look from wall to wall, from back to front. Amen. Amen. Nobody knows how what a offense those walls were to me. We needed the space. Wanted the space. We wanted it open. The God of heaven come then and took it away. Wasn't long doing it. And put it back so quick. Until now, it don't look like we've done nothing. Look like it's something happened overnight. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Just like it happened overnight. Don't look like we've done nothing. You, don't, you ain't tired from rolling them wheelbarrows around here. <laughs> Are you? Oh, well, certainly not. Just like I ain't done nothing. Yes, Looking at the building, and how did that get me? Yes, Don't you remember that you rolled a wheelbarrow and all, all that foam? <laughs> Looks like it come up overnight. The mighty hand of God. Amen. Yes, nobody else could do it. But God. Amen. Amen. Nobody has to do this. Oh, <laughs> this is a real job. Yes, sir. You've Thank got to Lord. do it. Thank you, Lord. So we are thankful. Yes, sir. Well, we're still going over. Amen. Till our brethren get rest. Amen. I rejoice about the Catholic girl uh, that got baptized, I believe it was last Sunday. And uh, she got the Holy Ghost Tuesday night. Came and told me. She came to me Sunday. And I told her the things she needed to do to get baptized. Get the Holy Ghost. And she did. Come back and told me the other night that I'm so happy. So happy. Well, I'm praying night and day that God will give the people rest. There's only one way to get it. Yes, You've got to get it by our instruction. Yes, All right, let us stand and be back. Yes, now, I understand we had a bad day yesterday and most of them went hunting. Yes, <laughs> Not most of them, a lot of them. Yes, and the one that went hunting and them that couldn't go over there. We want all to go today. We want to clean up the tabernacle ground, move all of that lumber down to the woods and stack it good. How often the highway looks terrible there. But they're on the front. And then we've got other cleaning up to do. We've got men enough to do it. So we need your assistance and cooperation. Amen. Now the choir is going to New York. The day we have a bus, I believe. Amen. And of course, then if the bus don't hold them all, you'll get on some of the Lord's cars. Amen. 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 I understand all the cars around here is the Lord. Oh. <laughs> all you have to do is just get on it. 
Amen. And go on over. Amen. Amen. Just say, well, the Lord has need of it. And if it's the Lord's car, straightway, they'll take you over. And to him that is able to do exceeding abundant above all we can ask a thing. To the only wise God, be glory, dominion, and power, henceforth, mine forever. Let us all say, Amen.